So today we're going to take a look at a hybrid technique, somewhere in between stenciling and scoring the whole loaf. And to show this, we'll finally try out that leafy thing I always see on Instagram lately. If you know what it's really called though, please let me know in the comments below. We'll start by marking the box we want to stay within for our pattern, then we can get to sketching the outline. Notice that the effect of the torn edges are actually sketched into the outline. We'll then go over that with scoring later to complete the effect. Once the outline is sketched though, we can turn to our knife and our scissors and carefully cut it out. You'll notice that we're doing this on a big sheet of baking paper, and that's important as it will help us to apply it to the loaf properly in the next step. While we were sketching and cutting, our loaf was in the freezer firming up. Not too long though, about 20 minutes is all you need. That will help give us those critical extra few minutes to work on the loaf without it spreading flat. So next we just turn it out on our work surface and we're almost ready to get going. Make sure you have a spray bottle with cold water handy at this stage too. Besides helping us get a good seal between the paper and the loaf for well-defined lines, it also helps us bring out those nice fermentation blisters. The longer you've cold proofed, the better the blisters will be. So we gently lay the cutout onto the loaf and make sure there's a good seal so the flour doesn't sneak past where it's supposed to be. I generally use a 50-50 mixture of rice flour to all-purpose flour, but you can change this ratio depending on how white you want it to be. Now be very careful pulling off the stencil so you don't ruin all your hard work up to this point. Now it's finally time to start scoring. Start with the outline, and this can be relatively deep scores to allow them to serve as the expansion scores. I did take my time with this pattern though, so let's speed it up for you. You want to make sure that it's the same depth all the way around, and that you don't leave any part of the outline uncut, because if you do, you'll get uneven expansion when the oven spring hits it. If you see any light coverage areas, feel free to add a bit more flour. In this case, it's where I sprayed a bit too much water in the beginning. After the outline is done, you want to give it a light score down the middle first, then move on to extend those tears in the leaf to really make it look like it's pulled apart. After that, it's just a matter of lots of little scores however you see fit. You don't want them all to reach from the center line to the edge though, so vary the depths of the lines as you go. Then just one more time around the edges at an angle to promote the ear growth, and one final picture for Instagram, and you're ready to bake. I've got a couple cups of boiling water that I'm going to pour into piping hot lava rocks as soon as it gets in the oven. This will give me the best blistery crackling crust possible. Careful using this technique on a fan oven though, as steam can all escape in the first couple minutes. So we've got it all ready, and now it's time to very quickly pop it in and start the steam going. So while it's baking, please take a moment to click like and even subscribe to let me know if you want me to keep making these videos. And if you're really bored, follow me on Instagram and Twitter too. So all that's left to do is take out the final loaf and then try and wait through that excruciatingly long hour to let it fully cool before cutting into it. So there we have it. I do hope you enjoyed this video. I am brand new to YouTube though, so please do consider subscribing and sharing with your friends if you like this video. Thanks so much and hopefully I'll see you again soon.